So today we're going to be taking a look at the G-Shock 8051 and that is the body model but before we get into it just in classic style of nothing fancy of course we have to because we got a TNP patch of course we got some cool patches here like a little nurse patch a little TNP limited edition patch and of course an awesome 5th special forces group patch from Vietnam which is going to be making some more appearances in the coming months so anyways we also got an awesome paracord bracelet down here so hopefully you guys enjoy this pretty packed <laughs> Uh, kind of tabletop review. So, like I was saying, the original topic is this watch here. This is the G-Shock 5081 body, if I remember correctly, there's so many names and numbers, but we're going to be talking about it and basically explaining what I like about this watch. Well, the first thing is, of course, this, the price point on this watch in particular. And this one, there are some G-Shocks. Uh, G-Shocks have many different pricing ranges all the way from you know $400 watches all the way down to like $50, $60 watches that have basically very little function to them and of course obviously your $500 or $400 G-Shocks have a lot of function. While the 5081 falls somewhere in the middle this one's right around $100-ish you know $70 to $100 uh, price range and of course, being in that price range, it has a moderate amount of functions. Now, I'm not going to sit here and play with all the functions, as I don't really like going through them all. And honestly, the G-Shocks are interesting watches, but um, I, I'm not fully on board with them because they try to be kind of like the multi-tool of dumb watches, not, of course, the smart watches. And basically what I mean by that is they just have a bunch of features, you know, everything from stopwatches to global time to daylight savings of course you know if you hit something like if i can hit the button you know you can view you can view your uh, day so your month and your day so obviously this is december 28th when it's being filmed and that kind of helps you know just a whole bunch of different types of features of course there's other features that can be accessed through different parts of this and i'm surprised there aren't any games on this thing because there's just so much but the reason why I chose the 5081 is because it did have quite a few capacities to do things like daylight savings and, you know, had a good digital readout, at least for me, with, you know, having your hour and your minute there, of course your day, as in this is Saturday, and then your second hand there, or not hand, but your second display right there. It also, though, has an analog feature to it so it shows with your hand uh, your physical hour and minute hands this does not have a second hand on it which is okay for me because I really don't like second hands I feel like they one add too many hands to the uh, actual you know watch itself and two they just tick really fast it's like I don't really need them especially when I have a digital display that shows me my hour minute and seconds so if I really want to know my second I can just look at that display there so the reason, the primary reason why I actually got the 5081 is due to the fact that I liked how it was split up between digital and analog because this way there's kind of a redundancy that if for whatever reason I can't make out the digital, which does happen, I can easily see my analog hands and even if you guys can see at certain angles you really can't see the digital display down here, but you can always see your analog hand at your minute and hour hands. So I really do enjoy that. In addition, I, though I do like being able to have the usefulness of these digital displays because once again you can quickly hit, you know, see what day it is, which is nice because I end up filling out a lot of paperwork, I think a lot of us do, and you know, it's sometimes hard to keep track of days or whatever, and so it's nice to just be able to hit a button, be like, oh yeah, it's the 28th, and then you know, just be able to go back to your normal uh, display. So aside from that, I also do like the fact that it's very easy to change you know, go over to daylight savings versus non-daylight savings. It, of course, is not in daylight savings because obviously we are out of that at the current moment that this is being filmed, but it's easy enough to switch over into. Another nice feature is, of course, the ability that this has to go into world time, which I'm not going to screw with everything just to show you guys world time, but this can certainly do it and you can see or you can adjust your clock to really anywhere around the world and you know it'll show you the display or the time for that time frame. Now granted that's not an extremely useful feature for me because I'm not a world traveler but it is also a handy feature 
that have. Now, the other reason why I got this is I think why most people uh, get G-Shocks, at least one of the reasons, and that is its durability. These things are made, obviously, in a kind of militaresque fashion, so they're built, or rather they're overbuilt, so that they can take a lot of abuse, and I really do like how on this watch, though, it's a bit of a pain to clean the glass. I like how the glass is very well embedded, so if you can see, you know, if you look at it from this angle, you can see that there's a lot of plastic or kind of rubber that protects the glass, unlike on some of my other watches, like some of the Seikos and others that I've had, where the glass is very much at the top of this kind of bezel. It's very easy for it to get scratched or, you know, um, scraped up or just overall hurt, which, you know, you can obviously put sapphire protectors over your glass, but it's nice that you don't have to do that, and it's nice when the watch itself kind of is built in a way that protects your actual watch face. Of course, G-Shocks are also water and shock resistant, and they, this watch is no different, you know, it's been, it's done a very good job overall at protecting its uh, timepiece or its time element overall. So the third reason I got this watch, or maybe this is probably honestly the first reason, is the band width. And <clears throat> that's because a lot of the watches I was wearing prior to this had very narrow bands. And while narrow bands are great and all, I was finding that I, they were kind of cutting off blood flow or giving me arthritic pain whenever I would wear them. And I wasn't trying to wear them, you know, particularly hard or tight on my wrist, but it was... You know, I have to keep the wrist, or I have to keep the watch on, so I had to have it to a certain degree tight, so that the watch just wouldn't fall off. And that was where I was running into issues with, especially my Seiko SNK, was um, the band was just too uh, too narrow, and it was just digging into me too much. So I liked the G-Shock because it has a very wide band, and it really prevents or distributes the pressure from the tension system overall very well and ever since wearing the G-Shock I have not had any issues with that similar type of pain so that's <laughs> a pretty good plus so those are the primary reasons I got it and like I said overall I've had this thing I think for around four months now and been wearing it not every day because sometimes I just forget to put it on or sometimes I'm in too much of a rush to put it on but uh, when I do wear it I do wear it quite frequently and it has yet to fail me, and it does a great job as a G-Shock. Overall, pretty well happy with it, and while I don't know if I would drop $400 on a G-Shock, I'd probably go to something like a Seiko uh, Turtle if I was going to you know, drop that much money on a singular watch. But these G-Shocks, they are pretty good, and they do have a really... Uh, if you're looking for a watch that has a great amount of function to them, a lot like a multi-tool, You'd be hard pressed to actually find uh, a better watch than the Seiko, or not Seiko, <laughs> the Casio G Shock series. And like I said, the 5081 is a pretty good testament to the series. It does a good job, and it comes in, like I said, right around $80 to $100, and they're really not too bad. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoy the patches, the paracord, and the watch, and hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. As always, God bless, and I'm out.